Praise the Lord, champions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If you're in the sanctuary and you are in the mood to give God a praise because he woke us up this morning, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. If you are watching by way of the cyber wave or via TV, let's bless the name of the Lord for seeing the light of another day and being in the land of the living. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So we are all champions today. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the setting down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, as we go further into this service, saints, if we could come together and recite the vision for Champions for Christ, this is the place where our visionary, where God gave our visionary to be as a ministry. Amen? Amen? The vision for, of Champions for Christ is to fundamentally strengthen the community by empowering each individual through caring, feeding, and protecting them through the word of God. Amen. Let's bless the Lord our God for the vision. Amen. Amen. And now our mission are the daily marching orders that we are to have to carry out day by day so we can get to that vision that is before us. Our mission is as follows. The mission of Champions for Christ is, is to restore the fallen, seek the lost, and to ensure the spiritual health of the community through biblically educating, empowering, and inspiring the people to walk in the purpose that God has commissioned for their lives. Amen. Let's bless the name of the Lord God for our mission. If there be anybody that is waiting outside us, you can let them in at this time. Amen. Amen. Saints, let's go into our morning scripture. It's going to come from the 145th division of Psalm, shall we? The 145th division of Psalm, a handful of verses in your reading and hearing. 145th division of Psalm. Amen. Amen. The word of God reads on this wise, I will extol thee, my God. O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of thy might and of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. But let us not just be hearers, but let us also be doers of his word. Amen. Amen. If we could look before, the, look to the Lord, let's bow our heads and come together for family prayer this morning. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you, God, for the grace, God, that you uh, reached out into the heavenlies, God, and into the earth realm and into this span of time and touched us and said, arise and walk and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the grace to begin to continue to walk out, God, the purpose, God, that you have before us. And thank you for the grace, God, that you have given us to see the light of another day and to come into your holy temple, God. Not just to praise you, God. Not just, God, to learn of you, God. But, Father God, for preparation, God, to strengthen, God, and receive an anointing, God, to go into the marketplace and convert unbelievers into your way, God. We thank you. 
Father, we lift up the furtherance of this service, God. We thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice, God, in the sanctuary. We thank you for everyone that's under the sound of my voice that's watching online, God. We pray you have something special for each and every individual. Meet us where we are, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We don't come out of form of fashion, but we come because we have need of you. Some people come, Father God, because this might be the last thing that they need, God, to go on and be what they need to be in you, God. So give them the strength, God. Give a word, God. God, quicken their mortal bodies. Father God, we lift up the furtherance of this service, all the way from praise to worship to benediction. And God, we lift up the word. We lift up your manservant. We thank you, God, for him. We thank you for his studies. We thank you for his sanctification. We thank you, God, for the fact that he's consecrated. And Father God, I pray that you would quicken him and use him to deliver the word without fear, favoritism, or fanaticism, to rightly divide a word of truth, God. And God, I pray you have a special blessing, Father God, in him, God, as he's obedient, God, in serving God and giving the people what you need as a good pastor, the good shepherd, the shepherd of the good shepherd, God, Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you, God. Oh, and we will give you the glory and we will give you the praise. And we thank you that the opportunity to be more and more like you and for the opportunity to go from here, God, and, be, but, and convert and spread your word as a result of what we received today. Thank you. And all these things we say. And everyone that believeth in the name of Jesus, say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, we're going to shout for joy unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to worship him. We're going to give him praises for everything that he has done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you all know that God is awesome? Yes, he is. How many of you know that Ooh. he is mighty? How yeah. many of you know that he is holy? Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. So, we're going to sing this that we know that he is all these things to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Uh -huh. He runs forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He runs forever and ever. Hey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Mighty God, He reigns forever and ever. Our God, our God. 
a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever.
Amen. Forever and forever. Tell a neighbor forever and forever. Come on, put those hands together. Amen. This beautiful Sunday morning. If you love the Lord, go ahead and shabbat the Lord at this time. Go ahead and keep on moving. I was glad when they said unto me, Hey, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was so glad that he kept me with his grace and his mercy that they're still forever sufficient in my life. I, I don't know about you, but I don't have to be primed to praise. I said, I don't have to be primed to praise. Don't nothing have to happen for me to say God is good because he's done everything he's going to do for my life. He placed my feet on solid ground and turned my whole life my whole life around amen and i am so glad about it amen i am so glad this morning to be in the house of the lord for the lord is my strength and the bible say and my salvation uh whom shall i fear yeah whom shall i fear um, i'm going to say this again from last week tell a neighbor say neighbor make yourself a priority yeah that, that's the wrong person Some, somebody's not getting it somebody's depressed this morning because they're trying to make everybody else happy they're trying to do to fit in with everybody else but you got to tell yourself say self make yourself a priority yes 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 if you believe that actions express priorities then put your hands together if your actions express priority, go ahead and shout hallelujah. Amen. Turning your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. I read through them expeditiously as the Holy Ghost allows. But I'll tell you that the earth is evil, but God's continuing to move. That there's a lot going on in this earth right now. You better choose a side. Yeah, you better choose the right side, as they say. Yeah, because there's a lot of distractions going on in the world. And if you're not rooted and grounded in God's word, you'll get caught up uh, in the wrong side with the wrong conversation around the wrong people giving you the wrong thoughts. But I'm so glad I serve a God. Oh, that left for us the, the foundation of his word. And he told us that he is the word and the word is him. Amen. So God is with us this morning. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. I'm going to read these. Amen. Real quickly. As we move forward, let's go to verse 19. But I tell you, we'll go to 14 for those who missed last week. Again, and it will be like a man going on into a journey who called his servants and entrusted them with his wealth to one he gave five bags of gold to another two bags and to another one bag each I want you to catch this right here according <laughs> according to his ability in other words don't get caught up in what other people have God's blessing you according to your ability yes I don't need to be a Spanish teacher I don't speak Spanish well amen then he went on his journey, the man who had received five bags of gold, went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. The Bible says he went at once, which means he immediately went and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. I say he dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought the other five. Master. Now watch what he says. He calls him master, which means one above or one I respect, one who gained authority over me. He says master. Look what he said, after a long time, the master of the servant returned and settled the account. He said, Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied beautifully, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. 
Somebody should start screaming over that. Yeah, because somebody in here been, 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 been faithful over lack. Somebody's been faithful during illness. Somebody's been faithful during these stressful times. Somebody been faithful even though you've been lied on. I got to have somebody in here this morning now who said, God, I've been faithful in spite of. I, I might not read no more after that, but that just touched me. That I didn't have nothing yet. I was still faithful. The doctor said one thing yet. I was still faithful. They went up on my mortgage again yet. I was still faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Did y'all hear what I just said? He said because you were faithful over a few things, he, he put this man in charge over many things. See, the problem in church is we want everything right now, but if God gave you all he had for you right now, I got news for you. You couldn't handle it. That takes a certain anointing to handle what God gives you. And we grow from faith to faith every day. That's, uh, okay, let me go because I'm starting to feel this one here. 21 says, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. What do that mean? Share in your master's happiness that he has found someone who will obey. Uh, it sounds cliche, but there are very few people who will obey God's word. Uh, you ask yourself in here today, how many people, first of all, have read the word? How many people have dissected it and started living the word? You'll find out it'll come to your surprise, not many. But here the master has said, now come and enjoy and share in my happiness. 22 says, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you Oh, a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Uh, so I was afraid. That's what an excuse looks like. Excuses are always uh, preceded by mush. You can tell when somebody's finna lie or make an excuse because they always try to soften you up in the beginning. Girl, that's a nice dress you got on. I've been wearing this dress one day every week. Uh, you, you're just now saying it, what you did. He says, 25 says, so I was afraid and went out and hid your goal in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received in back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. Wait a minute. See, because you don't do right don't mean God stopped working. Yeah, because you stop singing in the choir don't mean the choir going to stop. Because you stop going to the church don't mean that the anointing ain't in the church no more. I wish I had somebody on that one to say, I feel that. Yeah, because you feeling this disgruntled in some kind of way about your church don't mean that the church going to stop moving. You probably was the hellion that needed to be released to move on so the church can continue uh, to grow. It's interesting. He said, well, you should put my money on deposit with the bankers. 28 says, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. You see, because he's been proven. For whoever has will be given more and then will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside. I didn't know God talked like that, did you? 
Yeah, he talks about you like that too. You call yourself sunshine for the wrong reasons, and he said you're worthless. You're, you're making money for what you're putting out, and God said you're still broke. He says, and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I said all that this morning to come back to the subject of use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. But God's not going to wait on you. Use it or lose it, but God's not going to wait on you. Father, we thank you for this word this morning that's going forth. Let it rest, rule, and abide in all of us. Let your spirit fall fresh today. We thank you for what you've done, doing, and getting ready to do. Another opportunity, God, to be kingdom builders. Feed us this morning so we can't eat no more and help us to digest this food. That's your word so that we can become nutritious and nurturing to others. We all are teachers in some way, form, or fashion, even without title. We're doing your word through your will and your way. And this morning, you get the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. Put your hands together on your way down to your seat. Yes, 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 yes. I want to tell somebody this morning that this season won't destroy you. I don't know who it is, but, but this season will not destroy you. It, you may feel like it is, but it will not destroy you. I don't care what it looks like, but it will not destroy you. Has it ever been said that when people know better, they do better? You've heard that time and time again that where people know better, they do better. But Minister Chisholm, I've come to ponder whether or not that's true. That when you know better, you do better. The master is giving directives to three men. They, they, they know he's the master because the word declares that they are the servants, which means that servants, especially back in this day, obeyed their masters. So they know that whatever the master say you should do, but somebody's not doing what thus said the master, that when you know better, you do better. And, and, and listen, before you start doing what Christians do best, throwing false accusations at somebody else and looking down on them, uh, look at yourself. We, we need you to look at yourself this morning, do a self-assessment and say, I have been one who knew better but didn't do better. I knew better, but did not do better. Because sometimes things sound good, but they're not true. You've heard things many times, and you've been dis persuaded or distracted by something that sound good, but there was no truth to it. Uh, let me give you something that hits home. Um, the guy told you he loved you. It sounded good, but you know, James, they knew it wasn't true when you told her. But because James had a Mustang, the Mustang made it sound good, and she believed that it was true. We think ourselves into truisms at times. We think ourselves into what seemeth right that leads. To destruction. You, you talk yourself into sin. Has anyone in here ever talked themselves into sin? You can raise, put it down real quick. Ain't nobody looking. God bless those virtually this morning. Excuse me. I'm not trying to be rude. Just trying to get somewhere. But, but a lot of people talk themselves, Andy, into believing a lie. The, the, the lie that they told themselves. They, they believe that story. Why? But because it sounds better to tell the teacher that my dog ate up my homework rather than just tell the teacher I didn't do it. It's better to tell your spouse that, yes, I went job hunting today, lying rather than saying I didn't. I just stayed home and, and watched Sports Center. We'll make a lie sound good. We, we, we'll make, the, make it to that we, we think that what we're fabricating or fabricating is the truth. 
But when people know better, they do better. I can't say that's true in my life. Because there is a difference in knowing better and doing better. I know eating desserts don't do William no good. I tell myself that I'm going to have two cookies. And I do have two cookies. Plus. So I tell myself, technically, I'm not lying to myself, but I meant in content that I was going to only have two cookies. But I end up eating a whole row of cookies, and the reason I know that, I know it, and then my wife always reminds me. You ate a whole row of cookies? And I'm like, I bought them. I don't tell you how to eat your, uh, what you eat for breakfast all the time? Um, uh, babe, what you eat for breakfast all the time? Um, yogurt. I don't tell you how to put peaches in your yogurt. I don't tell you how to do this and do that. I ate two cookies. I put down that I was going to eat two cookies. I ate two cookies and then some. I, I made a lie look like the truth. So I could appease my conscience. I, I know carbs and what carbs do to you, yet I gobble down as much spaghetti as I can, and I don't blame it on the carbs or the spaghetti. I look at the sauce and the meatballs. I concentrate. I wish I had more people that was chewing here. I can look at you and tell you on the same diet I'm on. Sitting in here, I can't believe Pastor don't have that type of restraint. Well, um, boo, I got a mirror. Then we can look in that thing together that me and you eating too many carbs uh, at the same time. I know I need to be back up at 5.30 exercising, getting back on my walking regimen. And I've been lying to myself and making it sound like a truth that I'm going to start Monday. I, I, I got the wrong crowd today. These people here, they're going to hell. They're going to have a trophy for lying, but they won't wear a crown. We have to understand that in, in, in church, uh, we're like these guys who master gave them instructions, that we don't come to church just to scream and have a good time and feel good. That's what we've been taught when we were younger, but that season's over. In today's season, much more is required because we have to give. Because the world is continuously giving. If you look at it, more people now, they're going to their telephone before they go to anything. And they're saying, well, my Bible app is on my telephone, but you always get distracted by Instagram before you get to the Bible. You find a way to get over there to look to, to uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Country Wayne. <laughs> uh, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about Country Wayne? Con yeah, you see what I'm saying? Now, how many of y'all know about Ecclesiastes? Okay, I'm through talking. I'm, I'm on my way to my Bible, but I got to holler at Country Wayne first. And Country Wayne is funny, but he can't save you. I like him now. He's funny and he's entertaining and, you know, he talk a lot about church and stuff too and he do good by all 10 kids that he have. He take care of the kids and their mamas. Don't go looking for him. Somebody already, a God sent a word through the man of God this morning, Country Wayne, I'm the next. Don't do that. We need to understand that we go to church not to sit on a pew and soak up all the biblical truth. We go to church because we want to be saved. But where we fall in short, Sister Maria, is that we don't need to be saved thinking because we're saved we're going to heaven. We need to understand that we're saved to serve. I come to church to hear the word of God, not just to feel good, but to serve. We stop at salvation. We stop at being saved. And that's why the church seems bigger than the kingdom. 
the church seems bigger than the kingdom because all we see is church. Because all we see is being saved. But when you want to see the kingdom, you have to see what it means to serve. Kingdom go with serving. Save go with the church. When we get to the point to where we can differentiate between the two, your life will become better. Your lifestyle will become more conducive to what God has allowed you. A lot of people are disgruntled in church and they don't go to church and they make excuses because they don't understand the talents. They don't understand the gifts that they have. Now watch this here. We, we understand, Minister Chisholm, the gifts that we receive on earth we show those off but first lady we don't understand the gifts that we have God, that's different. Now, come on now somebody got to lead listen this morning we, we're all about what we receive and not what we have we already have the gifts and talents in us God say I knew my thoughts concerning you before you were born they were what good stop right down so I already have everything I need. I don't need nothing else to return to me to make me feel like now I can do it. DJ, I don't need nobody now. Oh, I got a, I got a nice, you see this? I got this nice ring. Now I'm superwoman. You're the same woman with a gift that you're putting before God's talent. And the reason I know that is because you talk more about your gift than the action you show in your talents. Which means I go around and I make sure my ring is clean. And I, make sure, I make sure I put that thing on. I don't care who family reunion I'm going to. Everything I do is going to be with my, with my left hand. I'm going to drink with my left hand. I'm going to shake with my left hand. I'm going to pop to the music with my left hand. Because now I got something. That proves I should be here. Oh, I wish I had somebody, but tell somebody, if you don't use it, oh, you're going to lose it. A lot of you are losing what God has given you to be great, but you refuse to be great because you don't use what God has given you. You want to use what man has given you. But when I turn, I remember when FUBU came out. When FUBU came out, I talked to Minister Chisholm because this came from New York. FUBU and all that stuff were tight. I couldn't afford it, but I wanted it. For some reason, I thought FUBU would make me look better. I thought it would make me have a washboard, but, but when I didn't get it, and I'm glad by the time I could afford it, it had started to fade. <laughs> they weren't wearing FUBU no more. Something else came out, and people started wearing that. What you saying? I want to wear something internally that never fades. I want to use something that I can use it until I cannot use it up. I'll die before I use up what God has given me. Somebody shout amen. I, I'm sorry. I know you came to tell, to, to tell you're going to have a lot of money, but I want to tell you your money is enriched in your talent. See, when God gives you talent, there's opportunity that comes with your talent. But if you don't use your talent, you'll never go up there and grab your opportunity. Opportunity is all around you. All you got to do is start looking around at it. And everything that looked like you can't do, you got to know you're a child of God. And my God can do anything but fail. My God can do the impossible. So if my God can do the impossible, I can have everything. But you won't speak that because it's not a part of the fleshly reunion. Uh, we have fleshly reunions. Uh, we have all kind of fleshly reunions. Yeah, everything that we can purchase with money has more value than your Holy Ghost. You never see people walk around and say, how you doing, girl? Look at my Holy Ghost. How it look? Is it, is it fitting right? No, we, we don't do that. We, we, we don't worry about how the Holy Ghost is because people can't see it. But I, I beg to differ with you when you say that. They don't have to look at it to see it. They can watch it through your actions. They'll be like, what's different with you? 
They'll start giving you all kind of new names, mama, then call. You know, look at stuck up over there. Look at precious. Uh, here's the best name. Who does she think she is? Now, you get all those names when you have something that's in action that they can't grab. They can see it, and they notice something special, but they can't hold it in. They can't go and get what you got because it don't cost money. God has already instilled in them what they're displaying through how they acting. So don't tell me you're saved and when we get home you can't compromise. All you do is customize. I ain't talking about customize a car. I'm talking about customize the words that are coming out your mouth. We call it cussing in the hood. Over there where you live you call it profanity. But what it ain't, it ain't the Holy Ghost. It ain't the talent that God has given you. You need to get to the point to where you start sashaying the Holy Ghost. And say, look at what I'm using, baby. You got it, but your light is dim because you don't use it. You, you don't. Your testimony can never. Uh, I'm not going to say can't. Will never be like my testimony because we're not using the same weaponry. There's no way. Minister Tinch, that they, their testimony can be like mine because they ain't fighting the biggest battle. When you fight the bigger demons, the greater the reward. You ain't fighting what I'm fighting. You still dealing with fiery darts. Baby, I'm dealing with legions. Yeah. There's no way we can be in the same conversation because you're not using what I'm using. You've lost what I'm using. But yet you want what I got. You know how many rogues in the church? I'm sorry, let me keep this polished. How many thieves in the church? What's a thief, pastor? Somebody who want what you, what you got but don't want to really, they're not willing to work for what you have, so they want to steal what you have. Let me tell you something. Quit telling everybody your testimony. It ain't for everybody. Some of the wrong people get your testimony and use it against you. Everybody don't need to know you were down to one pair of footies. They can't handle that. They'll go back and tell people, child, she couldn't even, she couldn't even cover her feet. I sure couldn't, but God has blessed me. God has moved in my life. Be careful who you share what you use and with. As soon as you get some, every time you get something, you want to always let everybody know you got it. The first thing you do is go to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You want the whole world to know what you have purchased. And rarely do you see people on all of these channels saying, I've been redeemed. Yeah, God has found me. I was lost. I, I was losing my mind. I didn't think, I, I thought I was in a good place until God allowed me to see where I really was. Listen, God has saved me. He's rekindled me. He revived me. He's restored me. Look at me. Somebody give me an amen. And watch how people, watch how many people reply online then. They ain't going to reply then. You'll get five or six, but not minutes when you start showing them in your mini skirt. Now you got people don't even know you want to get on board with you. Can I ride your testimony with you, sister? You looking good. People work hard to try to reshape who they are. And they leave out the truth. This guy here, this guy who had one talent, lied. The one with ten talents, five talents, he came back with ten. The one with, 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 with two talents, he came back with four. And the one with one talent came back with one. That's how we are. You don't have enough to become wealthy. You don't have enough to become rich. So you hold what you got in your hand. Instead of saying, I'll never get rich with what's in my hand, so I might as well go out here and sow it. My chances are better when I sow it. But what I'm not going to do is keep the little joy I have suppressed by somebody making me mad. I refuse to do that. There's no person on this earth that has enough power to puppetize you. 
When you become puppetized, what that mean? Uh, I'm mad with such and such. Until, you, until it starts to change your aura, it starts to change your behavior, you've given somebody on earth who has the same things you have power over you. I wish I had somebody who say, I've been down that road. Stand up one time and somebody teed you off. If you were ready to fight, if you had, I'm going to put my salvation to the side and up in the whoop this system. I'm taking this wig off, bobby pins coming out. I'm putting Vaseline on my face. God going to forgive me. After I sin. No, that's not you. You're not using what God gave you. You're losing what God gave you every time you show out in front of other people. You show out, you really don't want to fight either, but because your friends are there. Now you got to show out. You got to put on too. Huh? You got to carry on like somebody, a heathen. I tell them they ain't, they ain't acting like a heathen. They are a heathen. Because, you know, acting saved don't get you to heaven. Uh, yeah, knowing God don't get you to heaven. Now what gets me to heaven is doing God. What, what gets me closer to the realm of power is being the word. That, that's what gets me there. All this other stuff, I got to have this and I need this. You don't need that. Your mind has become weak. It's become polluted to the place to where I got to do the things of the world to feel like somebody. We get more out of doing worldly things than we do helping people. We make more excuses as to why we can't help people. Ah, you were tired. I was tired. Well, why are you going out? You were broke. I am broke. Why are you getting your hair fixed? <laughs> I might get ran up out of here in a few minutes. God, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I ain't got no money. Why are you buying a new dress? Because that's the appetite we have occurred. That, that's the appetite. You, listen, you're feeding you every day. So when it's to the point where I want to go out and party, you're feeding partying. Yeah, you're the party promoter to your spirit. Yeah, so that's why I got to go. Or if you're going out, I need to really get over here and, and, and get these ribs. And you know you got high blood pressure. I got to have them. Do not call me when you get ready to go to the hospital, call an ambulance. I'm not fool. Stop dealing with foolishness. Don't st stop dealing with foolishness. They refuse to use God and what God has given them. Let them see what it's like. Because you will wear yourself out trying to be God in people's lives. You will wear yourself out trying to be God in people's lives. Every servant has both. We have a job to do and the ability to do that job. Let me say this again. You have a job to do, but you have the ability to do that job. I was talking to Sarah. She's getting ready to graduate in two weeks. God bless her. Y'all give her a hand. And we've been talking about how, what it's like to be down at Georgia. It's hard to get in that school now. But those who get in have an ability to stay in. They have an ability to graduate but they don't graduate because they become distracted because they start telling themselves a falsehood pretense that they think is a truism. So they start saying, now I don't have to go to class every day because my, my roommate don't go every day. That's your roommate. Your roommate parents might have a lot of money. You down here on a budget. I wish I had more. Maybe some of y'all, wait till your kids get up. You're going to ask me to come back and preach this same thing again. Because it's true. If God bring you to it, they say he'll bring you through it. What God is really saying is you have a job to do and the ability and capability to do it. So if you can think it, you can be it. This guy who had the one talent, that was his problem. He didn't think he can double what he had. The guy with five talents brought back ten talents. They say he went immediately, Mayor Dixon, immediately. I mean, soon as God gave it to him, he said, I don't even want to let it sit. Let me go and invest it. 
Let me go and invest this and double it. The other man with two talents came back before he did the same thing. Why the man with one talent didn't? And he's the main one who had all the words to say. It took 46 words for him to say, I didn't do it. And the other ones just said what they had. What I'm saying, be careful that people that just fabricast all the time. They're probably lying. Because normally people who are working and telling the truth have few words. Because they're too busy working. <laughs> when you caught Jesus talking, it was always in the form of work. He was always working. He was always empowering. He was always giving out wisdom. He was always praying for people. He was always supplicating himself. He was always trying to give wisdom and knowledge to the disciples. He wasn't just out there talking. He was always moving. When you catch people like, girl, you know I'm trying to say. When they start saying trying, just walk away. Because eventually that spirit jumps. And if you're not careful when you're around other people, and if your spirit man isn't strong enough, you'll start saying the same dialogue they're saying. Tell somebody it's contagious. Oh, it's very contagious. Yes, 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 yes. God has given us all something to do. He has given us all the ability to do something in the church. He's given us all the ability to do something in the kingdom. He's given us all the ability to work on his behalf, but we refuse to do it. Just think, back in the day, one vote many times separated the presidency. One vote caused places like California, Idaho, Oregon, Texas, and Washington to come into a state's fruition. One vote caused these people to do this. Listen, now one vote caused these people now to have statesship. One vote. What happens when it's one idea, one thought, one pressing, one prayer that causes you to move forward? What, what happens? Quit making excuse. Use it or lose it. Quit up here giving this prayer while you're walking out of church. God, help me with such and such and such and such and such and such. And then you get in the car and the first thing you do is boom, hit the radio and start listening to music. Why I can't put the effort into God now for my future? He's already given you the talent. He's already given you the ability, which means that opportunity awaits who? You. You are where you are because that's where you choose to be. You're 30 years old. Quit blaming your parents. Quit blaming your parents. You're, you're this grown old, this mangled. You're, you're, you're tired, fatigued, lethargic. You, you, you hate where you are in life because that's how you think. I have been there. I felt sorry for myself. I looked and said, I'm oh well, I'm done. I've looked at all that and I noticed it never got me nowhere, Sister Michelle, but where I was. It was only when I started trusting God that I learned the trueness of joy. Football could not do this. And running out in front of 90,000 people in Athens every week, not counting the millions watching on TV or watch, playing in Auburn or Tennessee or Florida, all these big stadiums. It never brought me the gratification of what it was when I truly started trusting God. When I started using the gift of God. Nothing gratifies me more than preaching God's word because now I'm in the place that he gave me talents. I'm in the place that he gave me ability and I use them talents and abilities to the best of my ability so now I can utilize the opportunity to draw others to Christ. But no, we don't want that because we don't like to work. You know why the churches are getting empty? Because the sheep don't want to work. Sheep don't want to be got sheep no more. It ain't the pastors. The pastors can only do so much. The sheep refuse to get sheep. Sheep coming out saying, I'll eat for myself. But I ain't telling nobody else about where I'm, where I'm serving. Because I'm going to get it and I'm not sure I even believe. And you wonder why God doesn't bless you. You wonder why God doesn't cash in on your blessing. 
because you're not truly using your talent. You're not starving enough. Let me say it like this. You ain't to the point where you're willing to eat off the ground. I was willing to eat off the ground. My wife had to get on board, so she willing to eat the crumbs off the ground. Being a pastor first lady is hard. But we're willing to eat off the ground to get what God got for. If Jesus had to lay cast straight, be naked on a cross, take all the tormentation, the long suffering, the beating, the agony, what you think you're going to have to do? You won't even try it. You won't even try to use what God has given you. You make excuses. You press your way to work every day, and all of a sudden on Sunday, I'm tired. I refuse to believe that lie. That's a, a lie that people say so much it become a truth. Then we'll say, God understands. <laughs> Not only have you lied to yourself on yourself, now you lying on the creator. Tell somebody you a fabricator. They don't answer back because it's true. Now if somebody would have stood up and said, not me, honey, I would have told them to come on down here and you help me pray for these people today. But everybody sitting down, you're right, I am. A, I lie all the time. Because we're not hungry enough. Anthony, we're not starving enough. We're not to the point where by any means necessary, pull it out of me, God. Pull. If my last breath be working for God, then so be it. I like how Paul did. Paul was getting ready to, to be killed. He was getting ready to be slaughtered. And the last thing he did, Morgan, was look at the man who was getting ready to behead him and ask him, are, are you saved? <laughs> are you saved? When do it come a time where God is the first and the last and the other more in your life? When does it get to that point to where you say, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God, which means I'll never let anything deter me from the talents and the ability that God has given me to conquer the opportunities that are before me. Uh, we don't do that because all we do is think about church. We never think about kingdom. When you think about church, you don't utilize what God has given you. You try to hold it for a rainy day. Baby, haven't you learned if it rains on you, that means you might grow more? Uh, my wife, we were watching some on TV, and the lady said, you don't realize that you have to sometimes go to the bottom to catch the trampoline to jump up. Oh, they missed that jazz. They missed that. Somebody's trying to, trying to see what's going on for lunch. But sometimes the only way you can come to the top when you low is go lower. <laughs> Once I go a little lower, see if I go too low and try to get back to the surface, it's going to take too long. But if I go ahead and keep going down and hit the bottom, now I can jump I can get up faster than I went down. Oh, somebody, come on, man. I can get up. Hey, Jesus was on the cross for an extended period of time. They put him in the stone to bury him. And right, right after that, he got up. He didn't wait two days to get up. No, he got up immediately. You know why he got up immediately? Because like these men with the five talents and the two talents, he knew he had work to do. So he said, I cannot lay down here, look at my hands, look at the thorns that was in my head, look at how they pierced me in the side. I can't do that because God gave me a, a bigger accomplishment. He gave me a bigger assignment. So I got to keep moving. I don't care how wounded you are. I don't care what it looks like in your life. I don't care what you don't have. I don't care what they say about about you I don't care what the doctor say you need to look at yourself and say hmm, if I'm still breathing God has opportunity for me and if there's an opportunity for me out there that means that God has given me the talent and the ability to somebody shout overcome a lot of times we don't find or we choose not to find our God-given ability 
because we refuse to do the work. We don't want to do the work. Let me tell you something. Clapping in the church, shouting in the church profits you little. Because you've learned how to do the physicalities of something. I've seen people pray in silence and praise God with the head down and get stuff moving quicker than you. Running all around the church, wigs slinging everywhere, musk going everywhere, sweating like a slaughtered hog. And you ain't moving then. Can't pray a coal off somebody. Because we don't know our God-given abilities. You want what the pastor got, but you don't want to endure what the pastor endures. Yeah, you, you, you want what the first lady go because she sit on that first row. That just means she's one of the front liners in the war. That don't mean that, that she's looking pretty. No, first ladies, they, they go through hell. They get jumped on with spiritually for no apparent reason except the title. And I think I can speak for every first lady on that. Yeah, but we don't call. And the reason we're jumping on them is because either we don't know our ability or our talent or we know it and don't want to use it. Because if you were using your talent and your ability, you would come to her and say, how can I help you? What are we going to do to edify the body of Christ more? That, that's what we do, Jay. But we don't do those things. We, we don't want to find our gifts and ability. What's your ability? Your ability gives you power. Your ability gives you possession. Your ability gives you capability. It gives you potential and preparedness. Listen, that's what your ability is. Al, when you have an ability to do something, you have the power to do it. You, you have the possessions in, in store to do it. God won't take you to something that you can't overcome. He's already prepared you and equipped you for David said yea though I walk through the valley of shadow of death I will what fear no evil why 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 I'll tell you why because he was empowered already he had the capability from the ability that God had already preordained on him when he went to Jesse's house and saw that, that there was a young lad it was a young lad not the brothers no, they was older, not the brothers. It was the young one. Let me tell you something. It ain't the ones who came up in the two-parent home. It's you who came straight from the ghetto. It's you who came with the one parent. It's you who was on food stamps. Somebody gonna stand in a minute. It was you. You had a baby at a young age, but you kept on going. It's the one who didn't have no money, but you wouldn't let nobody see you cry. It was the one who had just a little bit of gas, but you pressed your way on the church. You the one he wants. You the one he's anointed. You the one that's a difference maker. You the one that's a way maker. You the one that's the light of the kingdom. You the one that's a glorified Christian. You the one. Tell a neighbor, you the one. You the one. Everybody stand there. You've day. just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign Champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristim.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.